I just want humanity. <laughs> humanity. Fuck off. <laughs> I said, do we need to play John, John Lennon? Imagine. Let's do that. Yeah, I, I love I'll... John Lennon. Of course you do. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Mm. I I grew up listening to the Beatles because my old man. Yeah. Okay. I never liked the Beatles. Really? No. What was the song that he made you listen to the most? No, just I just remember the songs on repeat. Okay. Yeah. Like all of them, right? Like, like literally the my old man's a massive Beatles fan, and like you like the Stones and like all that sort of shit. Yeah. You know? But John Lennon, like I can admit, like like I said, not my thing. But now when I, I watched that movie, was it the movie called Imagine? Yes. Yeah. With um, how the guy wakes up in a world where no one knows the songs. Yes. Great movie. And through that movie, I recognized that yeah. a lot of the, their songs were actually really good songs. Yeah. All right? Again, not my cup of tea, but I can appreciate good songwriting, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But the one thing I can't <laughs> forgive John Lennon for doing- What's that? He's marrying Yoko Ono. Okay. Why? Why? Oh, yeah. I okay. Saying. Now, this is going to get interesting. <laughs> What do you mean? <laughs> I want to know why. I can't. Why? I just can't. Why? Why? Is it a visual thing? What do you mean? Is it the way she looked? No, she was just a Japanese woman. You know that she, he had a concubine, a Chinese concubine that you, Yoko Ono approved. Well, why wouldn't you? No, no, like because he was touring. Because <laughs> it was. I'm serious. Because I can't remember the story exactly, but because he was touring all the time. Yeah. Or they were both tied up with shit. Um, she gave him permission. Yeah, yeah. She basically approved of like a Chinese concubine. Well, you know, um, oh, each their own. Why not? Hang on. Let me see have this. a bit of an open mind these days. I have it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Check this out. I oh, think- she's a freak. I love it. Yeah. Um, as much as people talk about the Beatles and how great their music is, was, whatever you want to say, I totally agree with them. I think they're the greatest band of all time. But I have to be honest with you. John Lennon and Paul McCartney redefined Pussy Whipped. <laughs> you have to watch this fucking video. It's John Lennon is singing with Chuck Berry. Chuck Berry is probably one of the main reasons why John Lennon, Lennon ever picked up a guitar. So now he's on TV. He gets to play with his idol. Unbelievable. They're playing uh, Chuck Berry's hit Memphis. Okay. John Lennon's got Yoko in his fucking band. <laughs> They're in the middle of singing this song on television, and they're killing it. It's going great. Yoko's playing some stupid fucking drum. (laughs) And even though she has no fucking talent whatsoever, he's putting her in the fucking band just so she'll shut the fuck up and stop nagging him because he's too much of a fucking pussy to tell her that she has no talent. Oh, dear. All right? (laughs) The only reason why you're here, Yoko, is because you're sucking my dick. <laughs> right? She must no, have been good at that. The bongos. <laughs> but anyway, she's up there playing the bongos, right? So John Lennon, Chuck Berry, two of the greats of all time, harmonizing, <laughs> singing this hit from the 1950s. Fucking excellent. That's what this moment's Hang about. On. And it's Yoko, better. in the middle of it, can't handle that she's not getting any shine. She takes the fucking microphone out of the stand, starts playing the bongo, and as they're singing, you know, go, go, Johnny, go, whatever, she picks up the mic, and I swear to God, goes, yeah! some fucking crazy shit. And you see Chuck Berry's eyes fucking open as wide as they are, and, and it's, that, it's that fucking look. Dude, you ever have like a buddy of yours and he's 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 dating some fucking Dude. psycho, but he's in love with her, so you can't fucking say anything. Oh, and you're just sitting there waiting <laughs> for the fucking lightning bolt to hit your friend in the head <laughs> where he finally realizes that he's dating a psycho cunt. <laughs> Chuck Berry had that look on his face. That's Dude, excellent. I'm not even jo- like, I'm not even exaggerating. She, yeah, yeah. That's what the fuck she did. And Chuck Berry's like, what the fuck? I'm gonna piss my pants. <laughs> and it's kind of like, John, that's your woman. Get her in line. And John oh. Lennon does not even fucking, he Flinch. doesn't even blink. Yeah. <laughs> He's well trained. He just, he just keeps playing, and then she does it again oh later God. on in that song. And then you look at all the other musicians, and they, they just keep playing the song like Yoko isn't even fucking there. <laughs> and uh, I actually get infuriated when I watch this video. Oh, that the is fact fucking that John brilliant. Didn't just stop playing in that moment. And what he should have done was dressed her down <laughs> right there. It's like, fine, you want to have a fucking moment? This is your moment. If you ever fucking do that again, <laughs> that I will slap you so fucking hard in the head, your eyes are going to look like mine. You understand me? <laughs> 
<laughs> play that fucking that bongo. That is horrifying. You, shut your face. you look like that bitch who crawled out of the fucking well in ring. That. You understand? Me? <laughs> I don't even know why I'm fucking you. I could be fucking anybody. You can't play the pong bongos. You can't <sighs> sing. Shut your fucking face. And then he just walks back up to the mic and just counts the band back in. Right? Oh, that is that is what the funny. fuck you should have done? <laughs> oh, that is so fucking funny. <laughs> I can't forgive John Lennon for that. <laughs> fair, fair, but you know it's Chuck Berry, man. <laughs> she, <laughs> she must be. She must have been a good fucking root. Is all I'm saying. She doesn't Jesus. look like much, if you ask me. Oh, <sighs> <laughs> I'm just. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's the dope. interesting thing is that's Bill Burr. Mm. He is my spirit animal. Bill okay. Burr has been slammed for being misogynistic and blah 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 yep. his whole career. Okay. Again, just more socio sociological like insight and um <laughs> critique of, of where we are right. as a people. Yeah. But it's nice to see that you you're laughing that hard you nearly <laughs> wet yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear lord! You broken? Like is I that am a little bit. Done? I'm just like I'm. I just need to regroup. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see why John, um, Paul McCartney's wife is has him pussy whipped as well. Have you got that? No. <laughs> okay. Wait, he was married to uh, S- Stella McCartney's McCartney. mum. So it was Linda. Linda. Then yeah. she passed away, and yeah, then he did married- he marry another model that was like half yeah, his age? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's a normal progression. It is, is it? Well, I don't yeah, know. I they assume is. they're going to marry well, someone after, right? Um, what's his face? Uh, Mick Jagger. I mean, he's still popping out children. Is he? Yeah. He had one not too long ago. Fuck off. Yeah. No. Yes. Look it up. How old is Mick Jagger? Oh, I, don't I know, know their drummer just. Google. <laughs> no, nah, yeah, I've got it. All right. I know their drummer uh, passed away not long ago. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah. He I mean, was super, super amazing. Hang on. I need to put my fucking glasses on. Okay, Mick Jagger. Child, really? Yeah. No. Yes, because remember, he they were a few years ago pre COVID. They were meant to do a show in Perth, I think, and she died unexpectedly. The mother of the child. What well, lost another wife? Yeah. Really? Yeah. And now I think he's married again. No, right, Mick Jagger is actually older than my mother. <laughs> I'm serious. Is he? He's seventy eight. Wow. Yeah. He still knows how to move. Okay. Uh. Jer- no, he married. Hang on, Jerry Hall. Now, Jerry Hall. Yeah, but she's now fucking fucking Murdoch. What a dickhead! But anyway, that's another story. Jerry Hall. Um. Okay, so wait. What are we doing? Children. Okay, so. All right. I've got it here. All right. Well. Okay, so Mick Jagger's wife, uh, Laura um, Bambro, yes. she passed away. Yes. Oh, she killed herself. Oh, did she? Yeah. Oh. I didn't know that. Yeah. Her longest relationship was with Mick Jagger, who she met in 2001. Yeah. And then in 2014, after a, a severe bout of depression, yeah, she was found dead. Yeah, so his youngest is four years old, Devereaux. <laughs> so four years ago. Oh, yeah, hang on. Melanie, Melanie Hamrick. Melanie Hamrick, yeah. Choreographer, former ballerina. Ah, the ballerinas. Seriously? <laughs> Can you imagine? From which she retired in 2019 after 15 years. Yeah. Um, she's younger than me. Is she? Yeah. Fuck. She's actually younger than me. Wow. I mean, that's like a visual that you can't really get out of your head, right? Like, seriously. Well, it's Mick Jagger. I oh, know, but <laughs> seriously. like, If he bought me a drink, I'd be flattered. <laughs> would you- <laughs> I'd want to know what he wants. Would you want his children, though? For fuck's sake. Seriously. He must be extremely charming is all I can say. Because... <laughs> Have you ever heard the... Um, actually, this is what you need to hear. Um, hang on. Uh... Hang on. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Hang on. Here's one. You hung out with David Bowie once, and I haven't talked mm-hmm. to you since he passed away. Yeah. I had the pleasure of interviewing him a few times, but you got to really hang out with him for a long time. I, well, I was just on SNL. We went, uh, Dennis Miller and John Lovis and I were walking around after the show in the middle of the night, and we were at the Columbus Cafe, which mm-hmm. was this go, and it was empty, and in the back was Mick Jagger and David Bowie. 
you know, and we sat with them and it was really cool. And Jagger goes, you know, we're quite famous. <laughs> and, and, they were la- and they were smoking weed. Is that okay to say? Or whatever. Yeah. It was a long time ago. Right? And then that. Bowie, yeah. I don't do a Bowie, but it's like, would you like, would you fellas like to go dancing? Oh. You know, David Bowie to us. And Dennis is like, Christ sakes, of course we are. Ground control, I'll call Fred Astaire over here. <laughs> John's like, I'd love <laughs> So we Brilliant. went downtown and David Bowie, uh, we got on dance floor, and the three of us, awkward, and Bowie did all these cool moves, and he taught us this kind of turnaround 360. You David probably Bowie taught you a turnaround? <laughs> yeah, turnaround move. Can we see it? Can we, can well, we see well, it? Well, I'd have to be on the hardwood, though. Can I go down Yeah, there? go ahead. <laughs> Love it. It's nothing really that big. It's just sort of like, right? Okay? Oh, it's like... It's like you just plant one foot and then you go like that. Let me know. I think that's pretty cultured. It's very cultured, yes. That's a moment that that you'd never forget. Boy, are you? (laughs) (laughs) Too fucking funny. Okay. Oh, there's another one that's left us. Who? David. Oh, David. I thought you meant Dana Carvey. You're still alive. (laughs) No, David Bowie. I'm. Reminiscing, I was reminiscing the other day about how we've lost such amazing icons in music of late, you know. I think it's just that time now. It's really sad. You know what I mean? Really, really sad, you know. So, you know, just got to wait for Elton to go. <laughs> Elton? Yeah. He's getting a bit long in the tooth, I think. Bless him. I think he's still got a bit of time. Amazing that he's still going, to be honest. Why, well, did you watch... um? What's it called? Piano, uh, what was the name of the, the movie? Um, um, Rocket Man. Yeah. Yeah. No, I haven't seen the full thing. I've seen bits of it. I got a little bit bored, to be quite frank. I, I watched it at the cinemas. Oh, yeah. Uh, I think, it, look, it's a musical. Right. A musical, like a proper musical. Yeah. Okay. Every 7 to 15 minutes is a song. Okay. I um, only lasted 10 minutes. Really? Yeah, I, I couldn't. I just didn't work for me. Where did you okay. Where did you watch it? At home. Well, there you go. <laughs> when you've got the freedom of moving on to something else, yeah, you right. move on to something else. <laughs> okay. I paid money for a ticket. <laughs> yeah, right. um, you had to sit there. Okay. I've only ever walked down on maybe two movies in my mm. entire life. Which ones? One when I was in high school. I don't remember what it was. Okay, it was something yeah terrible. Mm. And Dumb and Dumber Two. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, I got fifteen minutes in. <laughs> wow. And I was, I was ready to leave after seven, and my mate that was with me just kept saying, just wait, just you wait. You would have been wait. burning having lost that money for <laughs> that ticket. I was more proud of the fact that I walked out. Yeah. And my mate was really beat up about it. Really? Yeah, because that's a movie we had, like, we'd watched since 10 years old. Okay. I can quote that movie back to front. Okay. And to think that Jim Carrey actually agreed to do that movie. Sad. And, and, and um, uh, what's his name? Jeff Daniels. Ah, oh, yeah. You know? Like, they're both... They're both critically acclaimed yeah, now for yeah, different things. Yeah. You know, and to agree to go back to, to work with the Ferrelli brothers to do a script like that, mm. it's like, okay, this says something. It could be decent. And it was so absolutely not. shit. That's I walked so out. Shit. I'm so proud of the fact that I walked <laughs> good out. For you. And, I, and I moved on from it. I didn't even like get beat up about it. No, I was like, good. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. Uh, I was going to ask you. Yes. Um, you sort of touched on it talking about, I'm taking it back to parenting. Okay. Things, all right. Let's go. You can't just relax. I this am. Is, I, if I was genuine... any more relaxed, I'd be asleep. There's a couch there. <laughs> <laughs> just lock the door on the way it's out. It's fine. Um, I was going to ask, you've said, you've mentioned, you've, stu- you've touched on the fact that emotional intelligence is something that wasn't displayed to like in the generations before us, mm. yeah, mm. that you sort of focused on mm. and relieving your kids of emotional burden. Mm. And expectation, mm. right? What would you not do if you had to go again, knowing what you've done now? <sighs> okay, you've talked about what you wouldn't, what you didn't do that your parents didn't do. Did yeah. So um, what wouldn't you do critically? Because I can say, like, I'm asking this purely because I don't have kids. Although I've watched most of my friends have kids, yeah, in the last you know decade, yeah. So I've learned a lot, mm. and I know. Coming from an emotionally traumatic background yeah. and a wog household, yeah. I know what I wouldn't do. Yeah. I know what people shouldn't do generally yeah. and what is a positive. I guess uh, looking back, you know, I always used to have those moments where I think 
there is no way I'm ever going to sound like my mum. Yeah. And have those guilt-ridden um, comments that you throw at your kids, you know, like, um, I'm trying to think of a fucking good example, but because I've stopped doing it now. But, like, you can't do that because I said so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what sort of bullshit fucking excuse is no that? No justification. No justification. I'm king, that's how Yeah, it is. right? So I just, if there was one thing that I would change, it would be that for sure. Because as soon as you rationalise with another human being, whether it's your child or somebody else, and you actually can identify the actual reason why you object to that, you'll find that your pure objection is a knee-jerk reaction based on, what you've been taught, your learnt behaviour. Yeah. Right? So <clears throat> I guess that would be the only thing that I would really focus on and do differently moving forward. So now um, when I sort of – when the boys want to do stuff um, or want to, you know, try new things or want to hang out with mates and I'm just like, that's fine. Do what you need to do. Yeah. Just fucking be careful. Keep in touch. Let me know where you're at and there's no no curfews, there's no pressure. They just know to do the right thing. So I think that's where I feel like, okay, I've instilled some values in them that actually makes them think about how their actions affect everybody else around them. And that's really, really important because I don't think that – that's really instilled. I'm speaking from having two boys and I can only speak from that perspective. I don't think boys are actually allowed to be themselves as much as girls are. How so? From an emotional perspective. Okay. Well, emotional yeah. perspective, yeah, I get that. Yeah. So um, I'm very blessed that our house is a halfway house. So all the boys are congregating. Oh, so you were in Noble Park next to me. <laughs> <laughs> bit like that. Um, yeah, so I'm really, really fortunate that I have got an amazing relationship with all of the boys. Um, they come, they hang out. When they are needing some advice, they feel comfortable to talk to me. Um, if they can't go to their parents, they, um, you know, will reach out. Not that it happens often because all of the boys are fucking sensational young men. Um, but it's just good for them to have a backup and that they feel comfortable. Yeah. So I think, so going back to your question, that would be the key thing that I would change about just not sounding like, um, my parents giving me bullshit when there's nothing viable in what they're actually saying. They, they can't give me anything tangible as to, Stop and think, why shouldn't I do that? No, it was authoritarian household. Right. Always, every time. Yeah. yeah. Having said that, I agree with that. I think the second you can start reasoning, not even reasoning, but explaining yeah. your your reasoning, mm. the second you can physically explain it to a child, yeah. start doing it. Yeah. So they can see there's cause and effect to stuff. Totally. You know, you, you steal something, you're going to your room for this reason, yeah. you're going without dinner, whatever the hell the, the yeah. threat is. Yeah. I hate it when they try to do the nouveau thing and basically let kids run the, the fucking household. Oh, no, that's the other extreme. I right? can't stand it. Yeah. I've seen it within my own family. Yeah. It, I can't. No. I just, coming from a house where we respected our parents, like, period. Yes. And yeah, they were God in that house. Yeah. And it pissed us off. Yeah. But at the same time, we knew where the line was. Yeah. Kids that have no concept of that line. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, my brain explodes. explodes. <laughs> I've honestly walked away from conversations. I, dude, I left a city yeah. in, in Athens. I yeah. was in Greece and literally came into one of these situations with my you know, a younger sort of relative. Yeah. And I, was, I literally went up to the parent and yeah. said, I'm out. I go, I'm going to I'm, – I'm, I'm getting my bag. Yeah. I'm leaving. Okay, you'll see me in a week or two. Just because yeah. if I had to stay in that environment. And listen to the. I would have shot someone. Yeah. And then, yeah. I did do a big faux pas once <clears throat> sitting around a dinner table at my place entertaining some friends and um, one of the people that were there 
the son was there and he was probably around, I don't know, 13, 14 years of age, a, a real obnoxious little fucker, right? <laughs> like he was just... Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> well, <laughs> in my mind, and I had absolutely no right, absolutely no right to do this, but it was in my house and I had a few too many to drink and he was being extremely rude and disrespectful to his mother. <clears throat> I just couldn't help myself. I just got up and I said, do not talk to your mother like that, you little fucker. Well, that sort of, that sort of, it, it sort of, uh, it was okay at the time. No one really said anything. He shut up, whatever. Yeah. About a year later, <laughs> the mother had a go at me and said, and she brought it up in conversation and she said, I, I can't believe that you spoke about my son like that. And I said, I can't believe it's taken you a year to fucking tell me that you were that upset about it. I said, but you need to understand my point of view, rightly or wrongly, I probably shouldn't have used those words. I take that back. But he was such, I just, I could not sit back and watch it anymore. I could not allow that to happen in my home. And the fact that she would not reprimand him because he was the golden child and the only child and all that sort of stuff, I thought, you're just setting this kid up to fail because he's going to be an asshole for the rest of his fucking life. If he's treating you like this now, what's he going to be doing in another 20 fucking years' time? But, you know, things change and people evolve and he's now, you know, got his own family and he's apparently a decent bloke. Kudos to him. (laughs) But... (laughs) I guess what I'm trying to say is that respect thing is is key and you need to be able to instill some level of respect in your, not just your kids, with each other. We all need to have some level of respect. Granted, I stepped over the line that day, but I did it <laughs> because I was trying to protect her. I'm sure you've stepped over the line many more times. I have. So <laughs> <too>. <laughs> but let's not go I was there. thinking about this the other day. I don't know why I was sort of drawn to it, but I was thinking about it. One thing I'll never do as a parent is ask a kid who their favorite parent is. Oh, my God. That is like, why would you fucking do that? But that was standard when we were growing up. Of course up. it was. Yeah. Who do yeah. you love more? Yeah. That was standard. Yeah. Like, people were fixated on yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Like, it was such a big fucking big deal. deal. Yeah. It was a big deal. Yeah. If you went against One whatever you said. Yeah. Then it became this whole sort of rivalry. Oh, when the grandparents used to do that, which grandmother do you love more? Oh, my God. That is next level. Next level shit. That's a terrible position to be put in as a child. That, and then you've got the grandparents basically overriding any punishment that the parents Correct. set out. And then when you pull it up, yeah. it's like, oh, they're old. Or, yeah. you know, oh, you know, they're the grandparents. Like, it's like, so what? Yeah. Yeah. No, there's no... Doesn't give you the license to pick and choose what suits you. I I, I agree with that totally. I've gotten yeah, I've faux part on that mm. when grandparents are overstepping. Yeah, and I'm like, are you for real? Yeah, like, aren't you going to pull this up on? Oh, you know, they 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 they're the grandparents. You know, they can do what they want basically. Yeah. I'm like, what are you nuts? Like, you don't uh, give them the opportunity. I, I can't. No. I actually can't. And the fact that people our age in the last, you know, like. Like in the last like bracket that are still carrying this mentality, especially in the wog houses, they yeah. really, really fucks with yeah. me. Well, there's still people that don't talk to their parents because they didn't name their children after their fucking na- like, oh. name. Like, like, let's not go. There. Like, that's another. Oh. That's next level stuff. Like, who, who, it, what, what? Where are we living? What year are we in? Like, fuck me. That, that has come up more than I'd like to admit. Isn't that terrifying? Like not turning up to christenings, not turning up to birthdays, like writing people off because they haven't been named after an appropriate name. I I just, I don't understand. They should be fucking healthy and happy that they've got, uh, they should be over the moon. They've got these beautiful bundles that they can grow up with. It's just never enough. It just feels like it's never enough. How does it change? Um... Well, I've been told straight out by my kids that they will never name <laughs> their children after me, which absolutely suits me fine. Um, I just want them to – I think it's a matter of giving people permission. You need to give them permission to be themselves. I think if we were given permission to be ourselves a little bit more and if our parents were given permission to be themselves and our grandparents and so forth, we wouldn't have such – shit and trauma that we carry. That's my take when I think about it. 
and I break it down a little bit more. What was that? <laughs> While I'm doing the robot. <laughs> break it down. Good that they can't see me. <laughs> so where do you reckon that starts then? As in, because uh, when you go, when you're in school, you're yeah. not you're not left left to be yourself. You're taught no. to be uniform. Yes. Yes, and if you are an anomaly child, then you get, yeah, it's really difficult, isn't it? The whole system almost needs a massive overhaul, doesn't it? Well, like I said, I don't believe in the nouveau bullshit where, you know, children are basically the centre of the universe Mm -hmm. and they need to be put on pedestals and celebrated every time they take a dump. I do not believe in that shit. Yeah. I hated high school, but that's because I got bullied into the ground. Yes. But did that define you? Yeah, it made me angry for like 10 years, yep. 10, 15 years. But you've dealt with that, right? In my late 30s, yes. I've started to deal At least, with it. But you have, and that's brilliant. No, no, I, it's a work in progress. Sure. I'm nowhere near complete. It will, you will never be complete until we die, right? That's no, how it goes. I, I'm pretty sure I've said this to you in conversation. I've said that, uh, the what's it called? The development of one's personal character should be a goal mm. and an active choice yep. and an active exercise Every day, yeah. Define and, and de- develop it. Of, of, yeah, literally char- one's character. That, that's, yep. Can't make it as clear as possible <coughs> as that. Yeah. What happened to me in high school did define a lot about me. It's probably why I got a chip on my shoulder. Mm. Why, if I run into half a dozen of the dickheads that I went to school with, they'd probably either lose a tooth <laughs> or hear it. Yeah. You know, hundred percent. Yeah. But I do believe that, like school, even like the high schools that we went to. Allow for structure. Mm. You know what I mean? Allow for discipline yeah. and gu- guidelines and boundaries. Yeah. I don't like the, the no walls, the free, no boundary yeah. bullshit. Like, no. The Steiner way of. Yeah. You can't leave a, a, an eight year old to, to run on his own devices because he'll just be eating crap and yeah. doing nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. We do need boundaries. Like, I've had friends say to me that it's an ongoing battle with their kids, you know, dealing with uh, iPad addiction and shit oh, like that. Full on. Yeah. And I'm like, fucking take it Just off him. Just take it off him, yeah. Well, it's constant struggle. Like, take it, break it if you have to, and then be done with it. Yeah. So what? They're going to scream for half an hour. Let him scream yourself silly. And whatever. They're going to get tired and they'll just deal with it. Like, I, I agree with you 110%. So I feel like we're always accommodating. And that's also, um, that's also a byproduct of... Working families. <laughs> wow! Now, now you've oh, hit. What? Now you've hit the, the third, fourth gear byproduct. <laughs> wow! Are you fucking mocking me? No. Right. Okay. <laughs> Can you listen to the way he talks to me? No, no, oh, I love God. it. No, no. Um, when you, it's like inferred. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, so now you've made me lose my fucking train. No, you of said thought. it's a byproduct. It's a byproduct. Oh well, yeah, but where was I going with that? It's a by. Oh, now, okay, now you need to fucking think of something else to say while I gather my thoughts. So I'm just lost where I was going with you that. You said the whole accommodating thing. Uh, accommodating. Uh, it's a byproduct of. <laughs> <laughs> completely fucking gone. No, no, no. It's, it's fine. Gone, no. gone, 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 gone. Anyway. What I said was the whole iPad addiction and. Oh, and okay, yep. <laughs> I said the iPad addiction thing. Yes, yes. And not just taking the fucking thing off out of his hands. Yes. And saying no and, and let him kick and scream. And, scream, and yes. then he said, yeah, it's the whole accommodating. Oh, thing. yes. Okay. So it's also a byproduct, it's come back, of working parents spending so much fucking time at work. We are. As we are doing a lot more hours than what we were. Yeah. In general. So there's this guilt factor. So we don't want to upset whatever valuable time we spend with our children. We are basically pandering to their every whim to keep the peace because we're fucking exhausted and we don't want to be challenged by them. Then don't have kids. Well, yes. It's true. Don't have kids. Man, someone said to me, why... Someone called me uh, anti-animal, like not anti-animal. long ago. Anti-animal? Yeah, because I didn't have a pet. Oh. <laughs> and I said, I'm not anti-animal. I just have more consideration than to buy a fucking dog or something. Where are you going to put it? That Yeah, that was my first right. thing. Where am I going to put it? I live in a tiny apartment yeah. on the 14th floor. You'd be lucky to have a goldfish up there. Yeah. It'll fucking dr- fry in the exactly. sun. Yeah, right. Okay, number one, <laughs> yes. I don't have anywhere to put it. Number yeah. two, I can barely feed myself yeah. half the time. Yeah. Either because I'm broke or because I don't have time to eat let alone feed a fucking animal. No. And three, I can barely get myself enough sleep or to the gym 
let alone have walk, to walk a dog yeah, no. who doesn't deserve to be cooped up in a little apartment. No. It's selfish fucks like that that ruin, you know, pets and shit. That's, fine, but that's such a weird thing to say to somebody. But it's I assumptions. Just, yeah, right. It's assumptions. Wow, that's... So Hey, you called me misogynist and I'm actually a feminist. Oh, I did not call you a misogynist. <laughs> Stop fucking putting words in my mouth. Oh. Nevertheless. Yes, nevertheless. <laughs> <laughs> nevertheless. Anyway, this could, uh, we could rabbit on about all this shit. No, but it's the point. Time. It's the whole point about not having fucking kids until yeah. you can actually can. Or really want to. Yeah. Or yeah. not having kids just because they're a byproduct of marriage. Yeah. Fuck marriage. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. No, you shouldn't feel the need to be married to have children. No. Or you shouldn't feel the need to have children because you're married. Correct. Yes. Yes. I totally agree with that. I also think that there's uh, an enormous amount of pressure around that because of, again, (laughs) that whole generational namesake. The name has to be passed on for generation to generation. It's like... Really, those days are fucking long gone. My thing is the fact that you could pass on a name, but the individual could still be a worthless piece of shit Correct. to begin with. Yeah. If all you have is to hang on to was a fucking name. Yeah. What's that got to say about who you are? Nothing. What's it got to say about your whole family? You're yeah. fucking useless. You've got yeah. nothing to say. Nothing <sighs> monumental, nothing inspiring, yeah. nothing memorable other than the fact that, oh, he has the same name as me. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, good for What you. else did they do? Nothing. Nothing. And that's the thing. How many actual people know the ins- – like, okay, so you've gotten to know your dad's backstory, right, over yeah. time. So I can tell you after I lost my dad, he was only 52 when he passed away. He had urine disease a long time ago. So we're talking <clears throat> 26 years, 27 years now, well before poor old Neil Danaher came out and has yeah. made it um, – something that people are aware of. Um, And I just remember at his wake afterwards, we sat around the table and then mum had all these amazing stories about my dad that I had no fucking idea about, like where they had their first kiss in South Yarra, you know, behind the railway line, you know, and... Oh, I love his leg. <laughs> like, um, and just, you know, how he was, you know, split seconds away from making a decision to either stay in Perth or, or Sydney before he decided to, like, just things that, that his stepfather, um, when he left the army, because he used to be a uh, Green Beret. So it was my, my uh, dad's stepfather. Yeah, right. He was in the army yeah. as well, apparently high up Yeah, too. so, um, and, you know, took him to Bedeas in Athens and saw him off and was, like, I had no idea of any of those little stories. and. Yeah. I guess my advice to people would be just fucking get to know who your families are. Like, ask the questions. You know, I have know someone who didn't even know their grandfather's name because the family didn't want to speak of his name because he had abandoned his child. So, so someone that I know, right? He had no idea what his grandfather's name was. His mum and dad never told him what his grandfather's name was because they did not want to utter his name because he, his father was abandoned by him as a child. Sounds like my old man's backstory. Like, seriously? Oh, Literally exactly the like, same. what the fuck is that? Sliding doors, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so serious. Like, it's really, um, how sad. How sad not to know. Um, your heritage. I, I just, I find it really extraordinary. That's all. It's look because that's what makes us. Yeah, but it, look, it's tab, it's taboo for a reason, right? Yeah, there's a lot abandoning of abandoning a kid is abandoning is, is, is abandonment. Abandonment. Shit. <sighs> Shit. Abandonment. I think we have too many movies about kids that reach out to their adoptive, looking for their, you know, their. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they're actually yeah, they're natural born parents, and then find some amazing person on the other side yeah. of the planet. Yeah, move to like some countryside town where mm. they're part of the local community. Not romantic. No, no. I think we romanticise shit a lot because of TV. Is that fantasy? What? Just is that? Yeah. Well, you just said we romanticise it because of TV, but is it also a way of justifying why certain decisions were made? Why would someone choose to abandon a child? Well, you know, I can only speak on my own experience. Yeah. And my old man was a 
pretty much the same scenario. Mm. And when I went back to Greece in 2010, it was the first time I'd been there as an adult. Yeah. You know, I'd been there when I was like 12, 13, you know, under my mum's coat sort yeah. of thing. But when I went as an adult and met like my old man's extended family that he'd only known for so, so long. Yeah. Because his father went and had a kid, had a family of his own, whatever. And, you know, his mother and stepdad came here. Yeah. Um, so when, and it was unspoken of. I didn't know my old grandfather's name. I still don't know it. Really? Well, it's good. I've got told it. I just forgot oh, it. Okay. Because it's, it's nothing to do with me. Sure. Yeah. Um, being around that family, I still remember them talking like it was some sort of murder mystery mm. about why my old man had not been in contact with them, you know, the 30 odd years or however long it was that he was in Melbourne and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And they were acting like it was some massive conspiracy. Yeah. And I'm like- Dirty secrets. What conspiracy? Mm. He came here legally. Yeah. That you, they knew that he was coming here. They knew who he was here with. Like, mm. you know, it's like my, st- my his stepfather stole him. Like, yeah. they literally gave him the option. Yeah. We're leaving. What do you want? Yeah. And they didn't care. Yeah. And my grandfather's backstory is not one of honor <laughs> and merit. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah. look at this. So I'll, 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 I'll give you one fact and you can probably tie it all in okay. after that. My old man has a brother who's like nine months apart with him. Wow. Yeah. Like, they're very close in age. Okay. A, so, half bro- a half brother. Half brother. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we just start the story from there. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. So I looked at it and I'm like, and they tried to sort of set me up at a lunch dinner, you know, lunch table sort of thing. And yeah. they're like, what do you think about all this? And I'm like, <laughs> I just sort of just like put my fork down. I'm Wrong like, person to ask. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> took a, you know, I go, look, whatever's happened has happened. It was a very long time ago mm. under different circumstances. And I don't think it's worth dwelling on mm. or investigating any further. Yeah. I think we should just be uh, thankful for the fact that we're all uh, reunited and yes. you know, we move forward. Positive. I said it as diplomatically as I could. <laughs> and quite frankly, I think that was the last time I had lunch there. Wow. Yeah. Good. They don't deserve to have- they no. just want the scandal. They want the. Don't the, sell it yeah. to me like it's some sort of murder mystery. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's a you know hallmark series it's in the, the middle drama. of the week. Fuck off! It's the fucking drama. The fact of the matter is, certain people were scumbags. Yeah. Certain things were done, mm-hmm. and that's the end of it. Yep. Yeah, we persevere. We move on. That's yes. what do you want? What do you want me to say? No, that's right. Everyone makes mistakes. Some more than others. Well, look at Chuck Berry, right, from the Yoko Ono video. <laughs> Poor Chuck. Right? <laughs> Chuck Berry is revered as a fucking god yes. of rock and roll, yeah. right? If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have, like, you know, uh, what's his name from Akadaka doing the duck walk. Yeah, right. You wouldn't have the sound that they were chasing all through the 60s and 70s. Yeah. He is revered. Chuck Berry the person. Mm. Mm, Questionable. Slightly arrogant. <laughs> yes. To the point where... When he would tour towns, bands didn't want to tour with him anymore yeah. because he didn't have a touring band. He would go to a town and pick and just say, the local, this is the yeah, gig. Yeah. Give me a band to play with. Yeah. And he would expect them to know his entire catalog Shit. off the like off the top. It's like, I'm Chuck Berry. I have a hundred songs I play. You're going to know all of them. That's insane. So if I want to break it up and change into something different, <gasps> you, you're need gonna to know, you need to know what I'm doing. Wow. That's just the, the tip of the iceberg, wow. let alone his personal life. Right. That's his professional and life. And we thought Madonna was a diva. Fuck Madonna's a hell. fuckwit. <laughs> Did you see that video of her in the bathtub? No. Do I want to see the oh, video? Of her? <laughs> do you? <laughs> oh, dear. Madonna bathtub. Oh I'm telling God. you, this is all I need. Is this recent? This was a year ago, oh, right shit. at the start of COVID. Oh, my God. I'm so scared. You ready? <laughs> Hang on. Are you ready? I'm trying. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> oh, oh, please. What's yes. with the regrowth? Ah, Madge. That's Here so we go. bad. Well, it's COVID. She couldn't get no, to a petition. <laughs> She's got an in-house fucking She's in a bathtub full of milk, man. All right. Oh, dear. Is it milk? It looks like... That's the thing about COVID-19. Oh. It doesn't care about <sighs> how rich you are, <laughs> how famous you are, how funny you are, oh, she looks disgusting. how smart you are, where you live, how old you are. What amazing stories you can tell. It's the great equalizer. And what's terrible about it is what's great about it. 
What's terrible about it is it's made us all equal in many ways. Oh my god. Oh my fucking god. You never saw that? No. I remember when that got released. Oh my god. <laughs> I know. I know. I have no words. That's next level. Wow. What do you say to that? I <laughs> comments, please. <laughs> Your thoughts. Are you throwing to the audience? Wow. Self-indulgent. Jesus Christ. Seriously? Yeah. Fuck off. That's, that's, <laughs> that's the natural advocate, yeah? Wow. See, that's what pisses me off when people talk about Madonna like <sighs> she's some sort of fucking holy roller. Mm. It shits me to tears. Yeah. I'm like, hang on, man. You're picturing Madonna in the 80s, mm. right? Material girl. Even in the 90s? Mm. Even in the 90s? And then she had the little resurgence, right? Yeah. But Madonna is a fraud, as far as I'm concerned. She tacks on to whatever musical uh, genre is in vogue, vogue yeah. and then just makes an entire album using the exact same sound, yeah. and then moves on the next year. It's like having Dua Lipa did a... Yeah. yeah, I mean, seriously. And what sort of fucking bullshit song was that anyway? Shall we not go there? I can see that your eyes are <laughs> turning back Ma- into Ma- Madonna is a fucking ghoul now. A ghoul. She's a fucking ghoul, and she released that. Talking about the yeah, great equaliser. No. What does Madonna know? She's sitting in a luxy <laughs> bathtub filled with milk yes. and soaps and someone's filming her. Yes. I don't have anyone doing that for me. <laughs> and she just wants to talk about the great equaliser? <laughs> really? No, yeah, no. I'm sorry. I remember. I- do you remember those healthy advocate photos of her? Like with in the in the 80s where she had like, you know, um, she hadn't shaved a armpits and like oh, yes, all yes, that shit. Yeah, she was yeah. like the proponent, like she was the protagonist for all that she, shit. She now her face is li- doesn't re- resemble any no. human anymore. No. It's that Botox gone fucking haywire. Wow, those fillers are just How low is your self-esteem yeah. to do that? Well, I understand cosmetic surgery to sort out an imperfection, a happy accident or an imperfection that God bestowed yes, upon you. Yes, there's a right? place for it. I get it. Yeah. I can understand all types of medical procedures yeah. done for whatever reason, yeah. right? But how fucking low is your self-esteem to do that shit, literally transform yourself into the night of the living dead, <laughs> and then I'm not, no, no. But no, it's you're like, right. You're right. And then you want to push healthy yeah. mentalities? I just- Are you for real? That is just so fucked up. Seriously. She's going to say, she's going to tell me that she connects with the, the working man. She does not connect with anyone but That's herself. That's my point. Yes, absolutely. But people prop these cunts up. Yes. Oh, there's the C bomb. Yay. Hang on, mate. You've used that word more than me. Uh, have in, I? In today? The com- no, not today, uh, <laughs> but in conversation. <laughs> yes, I know. I always thought I had to refrain, so I'm just trying to be good. There's no refrain. <laughs> There's just no glass ceiling. This is a safe place. So now that you've uh, broken that glass ceiling, <laughs> where do we go from here? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm saying too. I think, um, yeah, we need to be rid of this sort of, um, I call it, a, it's like a selfish microcosm of people that just have no sense of reality. They are so in their own fucking heads. And they think that they're relevant, but they are so not relevant. And it's it's the airtime. We give them airtime. And as soon as you give fucking fuckwits airtime, this is what happens. That's But that's reality TV and social media and marketing. Yeah, so where do we go from there? See, I feel like I'm a proponent of that in doing what I do sometimes, and it really fucking pisses me off. So I try and balance that with making sure that I do work for organisations that um, – have a cause rather than, you know, whether it be the homeless or... Um, Look, sometimes you, know. you just need to pay bills. Sure, but I've worked in this space for 30 years, so I feel like I can pick and choose and a project every now and then that gives me a bit of satisfaction to know that I'm actually making a fucking difference and not feeding that wheel. Okay. I think you said that to me in a, in a message. You said, um, hang on, how'd you put yourself? Are you, are you going back into messages? Yeah, I am. No, because you said it. Because if it's not written, it's not said. No, 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 no. You described yourself as a creative fool trying to make a difference. Yes. How would you say you're directly making a difference? Well, I would say that I'm directly making a difference by working with certain organizations that I know have a moral compass. Ah, that's a nice way to put it. So, (laughs) are you impressed? Yeah, well, yeah, there's a no, discla- bit, no disclaimers bit. needed for this one. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so it's a conscious effort and I make sure that we give back in that in that space because 80% of the work that we do, as much as it's wonderful and it gets out there and, you know, there's some good exposure, a lot of it is so transient and it's fickle and it's bullshit, really. So you just got to find that balance. We're oh. not saving lives here, right? No, well... To, really? To live with yourself at the end of the day. Well, you know, we often say that in our team, you know, we're, we're not saving lives. So let's be realistic. Let's not freak out because the client wants to fucking change the logo and make the type f- size, you know, 55 points or wants to change the color 75 times and wants to make the fucking Photoshop, you know, just scan this image and let's take it from Google and use that. Like, you've got to pick your fucking battles, right? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a constant educational thing that you have to embark on. And I think that's why I'm so open to communication. And communication is always something that um, I guess I pride myself on in terms of talking about things with people that mean something okay. to me. You do realise this, right? Mm-hmm. Majority of the people out there mm-hmm. aren't having conversations no. like this. This Majority is what makes of the me people sad. they wake up in the morning yeah. and could not give a fuck about saving any life other than their own. Yeah. Period. Yeah. And that could be out of necessity or No. Right? Or it could be just because they're just so fucking I'm not aware. I've they're been just... in a situation where it's out of necessity. Yeah. I get that. Yeah. But we live in Melbourne. Yeah. Uh, standards of living are pretty high. Yes. But most people would never think to do anything. That would may benefit another person directly. Yeah, yeah, that's my point. I um, yeah, I guess it's just that whole empathy as well. What? What did I hit a nerve? No, it's, uh, a, it's a big word. Yeah, what, for me or for you? No, I don't think we teach empathy. <laughs> no, we don't. I, I think empathy is something that you either have or you don't. If you don't have empathy, you're a sociopath by definition. By definition, yes. But... <laughs> what is it? You either have or you don't. So you're either empathetic or you're a yeah, sociopath. But, okay, so – but I know plenty of people who are not sociopaths per se, but they per don't – Per se. Yes, per se, per but se. they have no semblance of understanding when empathy is relevant or not. And again, maybe that's tied into emotional intelligence. Maybe that's the difference. You know, when some you can read a room. You walk into a room, you read a room, right? You scan and you read a room. <laughs> yeah, I, <laughs> tough crowd. <laughs> oh, fuck off. Um, so many people have no idea how to read a room. That doesn't mean they're not they don't have empathy. They're just not in tune with their emotional intelligence to understand what it is they need to be Isn't doing. Isn't empathy a byproduct of emotional intelligence? <sighs> they probably go I'm not, I'm not, No, I, I'm not an expert, but... I'm not taking the piss. I'm just asking. No, well, I, again, I'm not a psychologist to understand. I'm just going from what I, what I feel. To I be w- fair, most women think they are psychologists. Oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Come on. That, that, was a, that, was a, that was Jesus. A, that was a direct joke. Okay. Just bang. You got me. <laughs> Kill me now. Shoot me. Wow. Um, really? <laughs> <laughs> I can't make one joke. Oh, right. Okay. One joke. Sure. All right. You made more than one. That's okay. I'll give it to you. Um, no, but having said that, mm, having said that, mm, growing up in an environment where Genders are forced to take on certain roles yes. or believed to have certain attributes that are more defined to their, like, you know, their gender, gender and their role. Yep. Isn't the assumption that women are more emotionally intelligent? The assumption is. Yeah. Yes, of course it is. Exactly. But don't you think that men are not taught to express that either? Yeah, I'm not saying that the capabilities aren't there. The capability is definitely there. That's what I'm saying. But why do. Why so does my that... psychology joke was Shut a up. bit more closer to home. <laughs> That's my so, point. I right. made a joke with some form of semblance. With semblance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I managed to come full circle with yeah, a lot of this, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that was a sort of a compliment in a way, sort of. To who? Me. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was fishing. No. See that, that was going <laughs> to the psada. Psada. Psada, my mate. <laughs> it's all right. I used to grill lots of fish in my day. Really? Yeah. I make the meanest fucking hamburger in town, honey. 
Wait a second. You just said grilling fish. <laughs> yeah, grilling fish and hamburgers. I used to do the grill. Okay, the, grill the grill was my domain. No, as long as you don't include both of those things in the same <laughs> okay, sentence. Fish fine. hamburgers aren't... Fish burgers? Come on, man. Fish burgers. No. <laughs> what about um, potato cake sandwiches? What? Yeah, potato cake sandwiches. Have you never had one? As in two bits of bread and then... It has to be white bread, right? Lots of butter. Right? <laughs> My arteries are clogging just hearing this. A fried potato cake with a slice of cheese, tomato sauce. That is the most bogan thing I've ever it heard It is of. the fucking bomb and steam fried dim sims. Please tell me you've had a steam fried dim sim. What's a steam fried? You get them from the steamer and you pop them in the fryer and they are the bomb. It's the only way to eat dim sims. Steam fried Let me dim ask you, sims. I've got a question. Okay. <laughs> you used to eat like twisty sandwiches, didn't you? No. That was too skippy for me. Okay. I was going to say. Because <laughs> if you started saying like Smith's chips with tomato sauce no, or some shit. I'll... No, 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 no. Nothing. I don't think there was ever a bigger culture, cultural barrier than watching Food. bogan kids yeah. making sandwiches with like Smith's <laughs> chips and tomato sauce. And they're like, oh, this is great. I'm like, I was even looking at it like, what? what do you poor? Know, like, right? are you literally poor? They like, are. do you need to come to my house and to have we'll dinner? Feed you. No, no, no! Like it was. I wasn't feeling pity. Like I wasn't looking down on them. No. I was literally. My thoughts were: Do you not have food at home? Yeah. Like, it's a very do we need to make a phone call? <laughs> Child protection services. I'm serious. I cannot. <laughs> never, never. I've eaten some sketchy meals. Yeah. I've done the you know the satay roll from Seven Eleven at four in the morning because oh, no. I'm smashed. Really? Because I'm smashed. Okay, fair enough. And nothing's <laughs> open. This is before we had 24-hour okay. Uber Eats. All right, all right, okay. I'm saying like being 18 years old, yep. clubbing, yep. you're starving, Seven Eleven. let's do two-minute noodles, right? Yep. I've done that. I'll n- I've never eaten a sandwich yes. with potato chips and tomato sauce ever. Good for you. No. Make I- sure you stick to that promise. I'm telling you. Okay. Not, uh, it's just... It's, it's a, wrong. It's a the, it's the just taboo, wrong. man. It just that, does not... <laughs> it's wrong on so many levels. Yeah. yeah I, people I, are like fully <laughs> like, like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> is it just me? No, it's not. I, I also remember just the thought of peanut butter and jam sandwiches were like so fucking out there. I'll be honest. I do like them. Don't you? I was a, when I was a kid hmm. and I started reading more books set in America and yeah. then I figured out that peanut butter and jelly and meant jelly. peanut butter and jam yeah. i went through a period for like a week yeah. where i was constantly making the sandwiches <laughs> and then my mum pulled me up and she's what are you doing <laughs> like oh blah 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 and she was her words were <laughs> like we've got food <laughs> what are you actually doing stop eating that garbage so funny no no, no legitimately no. i still remember and this is before <laughs> this is so ingrained in my memory i still remember the house it was before the renovation the yeah. major renovation to the house so i'm in the kitchen yeah when the stove was like up again, like I still remember the placement. How wonderful! And it would have been like the Renaissance happened in '97, so yeah, right. Pick a time before then. I, w- I wouldn't have been 12 yet. Do yeah. you know what I mean? Like yeah. 10, nine, Bless. like somewhere there. And I still remember my mum coming in through the door, looking at me, seeing me toasting <laughs> bread, and she's like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> Like peanut butter and jam, she's oh, asti sakla mares. Sakla mares. Asti ideas que fire fagito. Eat some fakes instead. I was going to ask you. That's the question I was going to ask you. How do you make your fakes? Secret recipe. What the fuck? <laughs> right. Secret recipe. <laughs> so I... I could talk about my disturbed childhood and uh, friends that... My sociopathic yeah, behavior. Sociopathic yeah. tendencies. <laughs> but I but can't not the tell you about my fakes. Secret. Um, I've, I'm, I'm going to challenge you to my tzatziki, though, because I reckon my tzatziki No chance. Yours. Yeah, all right. We'll, we'll, Do I have to show you a, a, a tweet? I've seen I- your tweet. You shared that with me. I have still I? don't. Yes, you have. And I still think that mine will be better, but that's okay. We'll okay. get Tell you, it won't be, yeah, okay. all right, that's fine. So my fakes, okay. Lentil soup for anyone that doesn't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so I basically use lots of onion, uh-huh. diced up really, really fine. I will slice up a leek very, very finely. Leek? Yes, a leek. It's part of the onion family. It's a bit sweeter and it gives a bit of extra flavour. Wait it. a second. Hang on. Yeah. You've, already, you've already gone off the rails. Wait a second. You asked me my onion, recipe. Onion and then leek on top of it. Yes. 
it just adds a different no. fucking. T- I use. I'm going to take some. I'm going to take some crusty bread. I offered to bring him some, by the way, I'm and gonna he take, said no. I'm going to so. take some crusty bread. Then I'm going to go throw croutons in as well. And then I'm going to have some pita wrap just, oh just for... Oh, my God. Why would you put onion and leek? Because it adds a sweetness that I fucking like. Is that okay? <laughs> so lots of garlic. <sighs> garlic. Lots of garlic. I'm listening. Um, <laughs> that was the side eye of the century. <laughs> um, what else? I grate uh, carrot and a zucchini. And I tigarisu them really, really well with lots of oil. Not lots of oil, a good dollop. And then I add my lentils after I've washed them, of course. What lentils? Brown lentils. Okay, there's multiple lentils. I, but there's Okay, well, it's brown lentils. Well, I don't know what kind of subservient culture you've come from. Where <laughs> only, only brown lentils exist. No, well. Call I'm that like- a living. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I need to get out more clearly. So are the serfs are revolting. Yes. Bring um, them more lentils. <laughs> And then the I brown basically, ones. <laughs> shut up. <laughs> and then I add my um, liquid or stock, lots of salt, pepper, bay leaves, and sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit adventurous, I'll put a can of tin tomatoes in. Okay, so hang on. So the, the carrots and the leek That's all t- weren't nuts enough, and you're feeling adventurous with tomatoes. Yeah. All right, you look, do not you knock poor, it until you fucking try it. You okay? poor pathetic creature. Oh my Let god! Let me enlighten you. No, you, you want to do it the pe- no no. The village way. That's fine. I don't mind the village way. I've had it the village way. I just like adding my twist. It's the E twist. Listen, save your bougie ass oh my God, recipes bougie, bougie. for the people in Fitzroy. Bougie, bougie, bougie. I don't live in Fitzroy. <laughs> thank you. No, I'm saying. I'm sure they'll appreciate your new wave uh, lentil soup. I've never had any complaints. Thank you. <laughs> Has anyone survived? Yeah, shut your face. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a proper recipe. Oh, here we go. No, no, no. I'm serious. This is going to change your life. Okay. I'm waiting. Now. <laughs> when I said which lentils, there's a specific purpose to which lentils. Are you talking red lentils? <sighs> I need to learn to stop interrupting you, clearly. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay, listen. I first set out making lentils the way my mum makes them. Yeah. All right? My mum's lentil soup fucking shits on anything. Okay. But- Her lentil soup is essentially a soup, okay? The key difference, one thing she does do, which I have incorporated, is she doesn't just use brown lentils. Mm -hmm. She also uses split peas. Yum. Okay? Fava. Nice. All right? So that was one thing she does. Beautiful. That I incorporate into mine. When I started making lentil soup, I couldn't nail it right, like the way she does it. Mm -hmm. And it took me years because I- Every time you ask a wog for a recipe, they're like you know, oh, yeah, you know how to make of this, it. Blah, blah, yeah, blah, a hoofta yeah. of this, <laughs> a pinch of this. You know how to do it. Yeah. If if it's not, you know how to do it. Then it's a handful yeah, of this. Yeah. Like it doesn't answer the question. No. So I got over asking her. I'd gone to her house once, and she was cooking, and she'd made lentils. I said, "Is the fakes ready?" And she said, "Oh, it just needs uh, uh, xidi mm-hmm. vinegar, xidi for sure, and it needs uh, rigani, oh, oregano, oregano, and." Um, my ears pricked up. I'm like, oh, yeah, oregano. That's the one thing I haven't been adding. Okay. She adds oregano at the at end. At the end. So when it's still simmering yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. oregano is triggered by heat. Yeah. Okay. The aroma would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. So that was the key ingredient that I couldn't nail. Okay. I've got that off her by accident. Mm-hmm. And thus my, my dish was- uh, uh, So is it a 50-50 ratio? Okay. <laughs> this is where it's different for me. Okay. I took another recipe that a friend of mine used to do. Yes. And then I- just came up with another thing. All right, so onion, you got right. Garlic, you got right. Brown lentil. Mm-hmm. Red lentil and yellow lentil. Oh, you've done this all. And split peas. Oh, oh, split peas. Oh, you've done all the beans justice. I exactly. love it. Exactly. Yeah, so okay. you have a cup. Yes. You fill it all up. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Quarter, quarter, quarter. Yeah, quarter. Yeah. Maybe more brown than the rest mm-hmm. to give it that actual feel. Yes. The other key difference that I do is whereas my mum's is soupier, yes. mine's more like a stew. Yes. Because I'm a sucker for carbs. Yes. So I specifically will buy a loaf of bread, whatever it is, whether it's pasta dura or whatever, and I don't get it sliced. Do so, you chuck the whole thing in? No, I don't <laughs> chuck anything in. I don't buy it sliced. Right. So I can actually cut it up. Right. To serve however I oh, see fit. Okay. Does that make sense? Because yes. I don't want those flimsy ass pieces. No. 
I want like a whole hoofta <laughs> worth of. Uh, you want a big slab. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I use less stock water. Yep. And I use more of the. So it becomes more like a dal. It's more like a, yeah, like a stewy sort of Yum. curry. Bay leaves. Um, you know, vinegar, like I said, yeah. uh, salt, pepper. Oh, the oregano, I didn't know about. Oregano I'm at the very end. That. And a uh, bit of olive oil. And, um, uh, fuck, I think that's more or less it. I haven't made it in a while. It's been probably, shit, at least six months. Probably okay. longer. But yeah, tech, generally that's that's where I All sit. Right, so we're going to have a fuck yes off and we're going to have a <laughs> tzatziki off at some oh, stage. Oh, mate, my tzatziki changes All lives. Right, well, we'll see. So does mine. <laughs> Yours can change mine. Mine can change yours. How's that? So Let's yours sends somewhere. people to therapy. <laughs> <laughs> mine, mine causes withdrawals. Withdrawals. And yeah, yours. And yours sweats. Is- <laughs> Do you get sweats? <laughs> Night sweats. <laughs> Night sweats <laughs> from tzatziki. Yeah, well, you know, <laughs> I'm already suffering for all that shit, so why not add a bit more? Wow. Mm.